One of the quintessential American badasses, Clint Eastwood is well known for his roles in films like the classic spaghetti westerns. Starring in over 60 films, his iconic rugged look and demeanor haven't changed a bit after all these years. A jack of all trades, a talented actor and filmmaker, a cultural icon, and a beacon of traditional masculinity, Clint Eastwood's career is one of Hollywood's biggest successes. In this list, we'll be taking a look at the top 10 Clint Eastwood movies of all time. Number 10, Where Eagles Dare. This epic World War II action movie is a classic through and through. Not only does it have the inimitable Eastwood, it also stars Richard Burton and Mary Ewer, all under the brilliant direction of Brian G. Hutton. Eastwood plays Lieutenant Morris Schaefer, a U.S. Army Ranger who must team up with British Major John Smith to rescue a U.S. Army General from German soldiers. In order to save him, they must infiltrate a mountaintop fortress called Schloss Adler. Despite Clint Eastwood's well-known reputation for violence in other movies, his character kills more people in this film than any other Eastwood character has ever done. The movie also has made quite a splash in terms of cultural impact. There are at least two songs named after the movie. One is the Misfits single, Where Eagles Dare, and the other is Iron Maiden's song of the same name. Here's another bit of trivia. Clint Eastwood bluntly refused to have his hair cut for the role. What a wise decision! Number 9, Escape from Alcatraz. You're absolutely right, sir. There's always the possibility that some asshole will be offended. Set in the 1960s and based on a true story, this movie will definitely keep you on the edge of your seat. This prison thriller stars Clint Eastwood as Frank Morris, a criminal being contained in the maximum security prison on the island Alcatraz. For a change, we can see him in one of his classic anti-hero roles. <laughs> Being the most secured prison of its time, no one would ever believe in the possibility of escape. That is, until three men will try the impossible. Escape from Alcatraz is actually considered one of the best prison movies ever, as well as one of the best films of 1979. Did you know that after being released from solitary confinement, Frank Morris's disorientation is based on actual inmate behavior? Also, the film was the theatrical debut of actor Danny Glover. He plays the inmate that Frank first encounters when delivering books. I may have found a way out of here. Number 8, Dirty Harry. Well, when an adult male is chasing a female uh, with intent to commit rape, I shoot the bastard, that's my policy. You can't talk about Clint Eastwood movies without mentioning Dirty Harry. Even if you've never seen the movie, you probably know one of its most famous lines. You've got to ask yourself one question, do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? <laughs> Being the first movie in the Dirty Harry series, Eastwood stars as San Francisco Police Department Inspector Harry Callahan, better known as Dirty Harry. But why do they call him Dirty? Well, because he's assigned to pretty much every dirty job that comes along. Things get really nasty when he works to hunt down a seriously fucked up psychopath that calls himself the Scorpio Killer. The movie was such a success that director Don Siegel and Clint Eastwood found themselves invited to address police gatherings in real life. Not only that, Eastwood's performance in this movie influenced a ton of other cop films as well. Pretty much all of the outdoor scenes were filmed in San Francisco, except for the bank robbery scene, which was shot on set. Here, we can hear Eastwood's immortal phrase. You gotta ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Do you, punk? Number 7, The Outlaw Josie Wales. I came here like this so you'll know my word of death is true. And that my word of life is then true. Diving into Eastwood's Western work, the outlaw Josie Wales is a fine example of both Eastwood's acting and directing chops. Eastwood stars as the titular Josie Wales, a Confederate outlaw who wants to start up a new life but just can't escape his rotten past. He ends up losing his family to Union soldiers, and for the rest of the movie, we see him planning and executing his revenge while on the run. I ain't hauling you all over Hell's creation. Dribbling blood over half of Missouri. The film was already instantly iconic because of its poster, and you probably recognize the poster even if you haven't seen the film. But aside from that, Josie Wales was just an outright amazing film. It was one of the first films ever to have an actual Native American representation without using stereotypes, something the film won a lot of praise for. Are you gonna pull those pistols or whistle Dixie? Number 6, A Fistful of Dollars. 
See, I understand you men were just playing around, but the mule, he just doesn't get it. Of course, if you were to all apologize. Being the second Western in this list, A Fistful of Dollars can be considered as the unofficial remake of Akira Kurosawa's Yojimbo. Drifting gunman, the man with no name, played by Eastwood, wanders into a town that's being overrun by two separate gangster families. Joe is hired by one family to take down the other, but ends up deciding to play both sides. The movie's tagline reads, he's going to trigger a whole new style and adventure, and it really did. Not only this movie, but the entire Dollars trilogy revolutionized the world of Western films. A spaghetti western from Sergio Leone, it really kicked off the spaghetti western craze and Eastwood's film career. This was Eastwood's first leading role and he was paid a mere $15,000. That's $135,000 in today's money. Kind of crazy when you realize that Eastwood would go on to be worth $375 million. When a man with a 45 meets a man with a rifle, you said the man with a pistol is a dead man. Let's see if that's true. Number 5. Million Dollar Baby you're going to find a trainer either in this gym or somewhere else that's going to want to train a girl. It's the latest freak show out there. One of Eastwood's newer films in this list, it becomes instantly clear that Eastwood still had it. In this movie, we see Eastwood play a rough Irish-American boxing trainer who's really easy to piss off. Estranged from his own daughter, he eventually comes across a girl named Maggie who pleads for him to become her trainer. Although he's reluctant at first, he eventually starts training her and takes her career to new heights. You're gonna go for the title. We got some moves to Hey. Million Dollar Baby is just one of the films that prove Eastwood can be both a badass and sentimental at the same time. Winning the Oscar for Best Film in 2005, it's almost universally loved by both fans and critics, and if you haven't already seen this film, you're definitely missing out. Like many of his movies, Clint Eastwood was both the director and the starring actor in this film. Title fight, or did he just bust you out banging your head against other people's fist until you lost your eye? Number four, Gran Torino. No car, no girlfriend, no future, no dick, okay? Just turn around and go. Clint Eastwood gives the phrase, get off my lawn, a whole new level of awesome in Gran Torino. He plays Korean war vet Walt Kowalski, a certified badass who is out for revenge after his neighbor tries to steal his beloved 1972 Gran Torino. He quickly finds himself drawn into a world of gang warfare, but he'll do whatever it takes to reform the youths of his neighborhood. Walt is super quotable, too. In addition to the amazing get off my lawn scene, he has the classic line, ever notice how you come across somebody once in a while you shouldn't have f with? That's me. Ever notice how you come across somebody once in a while and you shouldn't have fucked with? That's me. Eastwood also directed this drama, and it's probably one of his finest directorial works. The character he plays is quite interesting. Walt Kowalski, an old, racist man who feels alienated and still can't let go of his prejudices. Well, you're never too old to overcome your judgments. What, kill that cousin of yours and the rest of those zips? Mr. Tough Guy out for blood all of a sudden? You know nothing about it. Number three, for a few dollars more. Well, if there's gonna be any shooting, I gotta get my rest. The second part of Sergio Leone's Dollars trilogy is arguably even better than the first. It's definitely the most violent anyways. Eastwood is back as our poncho-wearing hero, and now he's a professional bounty hunter. The man with no name teams up with Colonel Douglas Mortimer to take down escaped murderer El Indio. The film has everything you'd expect from a classic western. Blood, sweat, violence, and melodrama. The film doesn't take itself too seriously, and that's why it's so good. I mean, we literally see Clint Eastwood chew up and spit out about a dozen cigars, and it still works. When it was initially released, it was actually quite groundbreaking stuff for Hollywood since it broke many unwritten rules like showing a shooter and the victim in the same shot, marijuana being used, and an animal being shot. Fun fact, this film was shot without any audio, with all of the audio later being dubbed into the film. Number 2. Unforgiven Give me your Schofield. What for, Will? Give it to me. Another triple threat from Eastwood, he directed, produced, and starred in this Western film about William Money, an aging outlaw who decides to come out of retirement for one more job. And why would he not? After trying to become a hog farmer, he found himself poor and destitute. So now, it's back to the good old days as he's teamed up with his old partner in crime and the amateur young sharpshooter, the Schofield Kid. Here. Wanna help me count this stuff, kid? I trust you, Will. 
According to Clint Eastwood, Gene Hackman was pretty concerned that the gun violence in the movie would lead to more gun incidents in real life, but Eastwood assured Hackman that this would never be the case. Also, Eastwood stated many times that he would never be able to win an Oscar, but thanks to Unforgiven, this statement was laid to rest once and for all. The American Film Institute listed it as the fourth best American Western movie ever made. This is a certified classic, period. The cruelty that I inflicted a horse like this, but your ma, rest her soul, showed me the error of my ways. Our number one pick is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. You wouldn't play a joke on me like that. It's no joke, it's a rope, Duco. I want you to stand up there and put your head in that noose. Directed by Sergio Leone, we've finally arrived at the spaghetti western that concludes the Dollars trilogy. I'm telling you, this masterpiece can easily be considered one of the most epic movies ever made. Originally titled Il Buono, Il Bruto, Il Cattivo, the film stars Clint Eastwood as the good, aka Blondie, aka the man with no name. He teams up with the bad, aka Angel Eyes, and the ugly, also known as Tuco. Just try to imagine these three gunslingers competing to find a hidden treasure of gold buried somewhere in a remote cemetery. With prison camps, civil war battles, hangings, and gunfights all around them, the quest is not as easy as it seems. The tagline describes the movie perfectly. They formed an alliance of hate to steal a fortune in dead man's gold. There's no name on it. There's no name here either. You see, that's what Bill Carson told me. The legacy of this movie can't be understated. Funnily enough, when it first released, critical opinion was pretty negative due to its depictions of extreme violence. But over time, it became considered one of the greatest films of all time, holding a 97% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and an impressive 8.8 .8 out of 10 on IMDb.com. It's the quintessential Western movie and completely solidified Clint Eastwood's status as one of the toughest guys on screen. Do you agree with our list? Be sure to leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and be the first to receive new top 10 videos from Stream TV.